Exodia in Link era, is it possible and is it now considered broken? Everyone on my live stream was like, dude, this is straight up broken. And broken to me means something not working as intended. And that is all because of the whole Link summon mechanic and treasure pander, which is a card no one is even talking about. But a lot of you guys were saying it's broken and I, I would say its effect should have been once per turn. So anyways guys, I'm going to read the effect of this card real quick because no one really knows what the heck this thing is until we actually found out about this. But I got to give a shout out to Blade29 for figuring out this. I think he was the first person that figured out. I have two different deck profiles to give you in a second. But let me go over this card's effect because this is what makes Link Exodia so dang strong. So Treasure Panther is a card where it says you can banish up to three spell and trap cards from your graveyard face down to Special one normal monster from your deck with the same level as the number of cards you banish. Now, you might be thinking, oh, you get out one part, what's the big deal? But you can infinitely get out parts, and you can keep on using cards like Wonder Wand, cards like a White Elephant's Gift, just to draw extra cards and put the Exodia pieces uh, into the graveyard. So let me go ahead and actually just finish off the play. Basically, guys, what happens is you're able to just special summon a bunch of parts. So, you get another spell in the graveyard, you banish the other one, you get another piece, you activate something to get extra draw power, and then you just kind of rinse and repeat over here. Uh, and that is basically what you're going to be doing. However, you don't need to stop there. You can actually link summon. And the reason why you usually want to link summon is because if you don't have the other Exodia card, which I'll get to in a second, um, you won't be able to add the cards back because they're not going to be in the graveyard. Uh, but it's real simple. All you need to do is activate backup soldier You get all of the exotic pieces back and then obliterate also lets you add one and in addition to that uh, the uh, other Exodia card, which we'll go over in a second, uh, lets you do it. So, again, guys, pretty much what makes this whole thing just super viable. Oh, uh, did we put it back? Okay, I want to click on the Pander card. Basically, guys, what makes this broken, uh, as a lot of you guys would put it, is Treasure Pander. Now, I'm not sure if I would consider this like super meta and broken because when we were playing it out in the live stream, yes, we, we tested the deck and it worked, but Exodia will have consistency problems. That's just relevant in Exodia decks. However, I will say though, this is probably not working as intended, so I understand what you guys were saying when it was broken because you can use this effect infinite times. There's going to be so many crazy things that I'm sure people will figure out with Treasure Pander. Now again, the reason why it works so well in Lynx is because you can just go for free monsters. And you don't even have to use Exodia's win condition by Exodia, like all five pieces. You can actually play the deck normally, and I will get into that in a second. So. Uh, like I said, there's two different deck profiles. This one can actually win with Exodia. I gotta give a shout out to my boy at Blade29. Uh, but, anyways, uh, let me go ahead and actually show you guys uh, the build over here that I've made. Now, I'll talk a little bit about some of the cards. So let's go ahead and go into, well, we gotta go into the deck edit section. But, anyways, guys, uh, I'll explain some of the key cards in here. Now, one thing that is important is you want to maximize on hand traps. By the way, this build can probably be more optimized. It basically took the other guy's build, Blade29's build, which is the guy I want to say that is the innovator of this deck, uh, because I've never seen anyone play a Link Exodia deck. Now, there's a lot of other cards that we can play, but important thing to like mention, if you guys want to build a deck similar to this or optimize this, hey, let me know in the comment section below what cards to add. Now, this one's win condition is mostly Exodia over. Basically, it's just a bunch of draw power cards because you need spells to activate the effect of the treasure pander. Uh, basically, you just get one of these guys out, and obviously, someone's going to be like, well, what if you draw the Exodia parts? Well, if you draw the Exodia parts, you're good to go. I mean, that's just getting all the pieces. You can also make use of Obliterate by sending them to the graveyard, and and then uh, later, there's another card that I'll get into in a second, which can bounce back all the cards. But for the most part, uh, it's just draw power, and then you're able to activate a card called Backup Soldier. And the reason why you want to play some hand traps is because not only does it keep you alive, and uh, Ash Blossom is a great card, but it's so you can fill up your monsters with... Uh, or, I'm sorry, your graveyard with monsters. And Link Summons really allow you to do that. Basically, you Link Summon to Link Summon into Link Summon. And then, therefore, you're just getting extra monsters in the graveyard. That's why the Link mechanic works so well for this particular build. Now, um, as far as, like, playing other things, you can definitely make other things. Like, you guys might be wondering, what the heck is this? Like I said, guys, this build is not optimized. A lot of you guys last night were like, dude, let me get that deck profile. Uh, yo, can I have that deck? And I'm here to deliver it for you guys. But I want to say, you can definitely make the deck a little bit better. I'm not going to go ahead and go over every single card in here. But the, the basic concept of this deck, guys, is uh, basically just get out a bunch of monsters at specifically five so you can activate Backup Soldier. 
and uh, you can make good use of that. You could also consider running something like Into the Void. Uh, the only problem that I have with uh, Into the Void is if you have the head, it kind of sucks because, uh, yeah, this card is a little bit more difficult to get back than certain other cards. Certain other cards, if they hit the graveyard, it's not that big of a deal, but uh, Backup Soldier only lets you add three non-effect monsters. Uh, I was also running Monster Incarnation, uh, just trying out other things, really. I'm still in the test phase of this deck. But again, basically, you just need Treasure Pander and just any spell card, which obviously it's pretty easy in an Exodia deck to have Upstar Goblin or like any of these, any, like, it's it's pretty easy. We, like I said, we can probably optimize this much better, but it's really easy to pull off Treasure Panda and then special summon all the Exodia parts because like one leads into another uh, via the effects of the uh, White's Elephant Gift as well as Wonder One. Also, the new spellbook stuff. If you open up with Spellbook of Secrets, I was actually thinking about running way more spellbook cards because uh, the spellbook cards go into another card, go into another card. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. So, yeah, I mean, I think it could be very easy to do that as well. Like I said, this deck is in early phases of my testing, uh, but I did want to deliver it for you guys because it got so much hype when we were playing it. But um, the card that I wanted to mention uh, before was uh, the Legendary Exodia Incarnate. So this is the card where you tribute an Exodia part. So it lets you just get an Exodia part in the graveyard. And then it gains a thousand attack for each forbidden one monster in your graveyard, which can be, you know, upwards of 5,000 attack. And it's unaffected by other card effects. So pretty much with the exception of a Kaiju, you can have a 5k beater that's immune to everything. And then, um, during your end phase, you you add a forbidden one monster from your graveyard to your hand, and then when this uh, card is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, you can reveal any number of forbidden one monsters in your hand. If you do, you get a draw card for each one. So there's a lot more to play with this. I actually probably would play multiple copies of this, because the way I'm seeing that this deck can work, and like I said, this is a very rough build, and I could make this deck so much better, uh, but I want to give you guys the original one that you guys saw. But I'm, I would honestly consider playing three of these. The reason why is because it's so consistent to just go treasure Pander and dump all of the parts uh, with the exception of the head. That's the only part that would be difficult to get out, but uh, technically the obliterate can search you out the card. Anyways, I was considering Torgai's Sangan, but you need your normal sound for a treasure pander, which basically sets you up for a game uh, really, really fast. But uh, with, yeah, like I said, with the exception of getting the head, if uh, any of you guys got good suggestions for getting head, <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Let me know. No, you guys get what I'm saying. To add the Exodia head to your hand from the deck. Oh gosh. Anyways, um, so yeah, pretty much uh, the reason why I was going to play Torque and Sangan. Sangan's also slow, and uh, yeah, but uh, anyways, the, the original build, let me show you guys like the originally how it looked. Uh, I just took a screenshot. This was uh, originally uh, when we were playing on a Dueling Book. Uh, the guy hooked us up with the build. So he was playing uh, Try, try Right which makes it so you can add uh, uh, special, I believe it's special summon all three uh, of the Exodia parts. Let me, go th let me double check on that. Pretty much it's like, the, it's the same build, uh, minus he's playing Exodius, the Forbidden One. Let me let me go ahead and show you the other cards, Exodius. Uh, so if you guys want to consider, you know, optimizing the deck. So this is a card that lets you actually reset all of the Exodia parts. Um, and if there are five different Exodia Forbidden uh, cards in your graveyard that were sent there by this effect, uh, by him attacking, you can win the duel. But the that honestly really never happens, but basically what what it comes down to is um, you special summon up by bouncing all cards in your graveyard back into the deck, and then when this card declares an attack, you send one monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard, and it gains a thousand attack for each normal monster in your graveyard. So, yeah, you could maybe get this card up to a decent amount of attack, but like I said, this card is just like outclassing most of the stuff in the deck anyways, however, putting back certain cards, and it's not going to really hurt you too much. Um, but you technically want to draw your Exodia pieces and everything is like draw power anyway, so I guess you could argue it hurts, but um, this card can be used just to reset some of your stuff. It's also level 10, uh, so you can make use of some maybe rank 10 monsters in the deck. Also, it's just another monster just so you can just summon it really easy just for your link summons. Uh, and again, you can reset some of the cards, therefore, um, after you go for a big link summon, if you want to play the deck a, a different way, you can go for your link summon plays. And then you can go for uh, Exodius, reset the stuff, and then go for uh, it again. Again, when you have multiple spells in the graveyard. Like I said, with the spell books, it's really easy. If you ran like Master, and I'm sure some of you guys can figure out other great spell cards for this. Um, another card, again, I wanted to mention was uh, Try. I think it's. Yeah, okay. Try it right. So you target three level two uh, or lower normal monsters in your graveyard and just special summon it. That's just that's a one card get back three cards, and that can obviously be pretty strong because that's a one card into a lot of different options. Could definitely see a lot of play. Um, 
And this, but it, overall, yeah, like I said, guys, I'll get you guys some more gameplay footage, but a lot of you guys did request it, like, immediately, and I was like, okay, I'll deliver it for you guys, and I'll be getting more footage. I want to play it more aggressively as an, an attack build. I will still definitely keep the head inside, because I just want that Exodia wow factor. I might drop some of the, like, the backup soldiers, maybe I'll just play one of them, or I'll play uh, some other way just to, like, get back uh, other cards. But I definitely think it could be viable, and I definitely think uh, people will consider it broken when you, when you go for the first turn treasure pander and like i said uh, i don't know if i would consider it the, the deck as a whole broken but as far as treasure pander i think its effect should have been once per turn the fact that you can just keep on banishing cards and keep on special summoning parts heck does you don't even have to just play exodia this could be like anything i think treasure pander is on its way to being an actual broken card in link era but you guys can let me know your thoughts is it broken uh I, i'm sure if you're on the receiving end you'll say it's broken because a lot of guys mind chat we're like dude this deck is broken it's strong exodia will have consistency issues but again the thing that makes this one so good is you don't have to win with all five pieces you can win by just playing link cards because like i said this card lets you go into whatever you want and then right after you go for that if you tribute one part you can just be like oh i got a 5,000 attacking exodia incarnate unaffected by everything plus i got a link monster it's not bad and like i said i'll give you guys that kind of footage but i was watching the guy blade originally play it and he was making the deck look straight savage i mean he made it look pretty broken but he wasn't even playing the head which I was like, what the heck? You're crazy. But anyways, I've been ranting on long enough. I'll get you guys some more footage of it. But enjoy. Have some fun with this deck while you guys can. Because I don't know. I feel like Treasure Pander, it legitimately is a broken card. But the deck as a whole, I don't know. You guys can argue about that in the comment section below. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And if you enjoyed this vid, drop a like on it for that Exodia Obliterate effect. And uh, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to see more Obliterations.